Hey there guys, so we're checking out the updated version of the APU tuning utility on the AMD Ryzen 5 5500U. We last took a look at it on the 5600U and I wanted to see how the new presets would essentially end up working on the 5500U. Now obviously here you can just see all the different settings that you can set on here. The only things that you really need to focus on is the auto reapply and of course going with whatever preset that you want unless you really dive into the wiki and you learn how to mess with these settings individually. Now that could be a very useful thing to do if you want to tailor the experience specifically towards your device because these are kind of just general purpose resets instead of just making something that is truly custom to your own system but i mean really we are talking about sinking a lot of time just trying to custom make your own settings here just to potentially squeeze out some pretty insignificant levels of performance though if you do want to maximize your performance per watt you can always go down that route now in Cinebench R23, we pretty much ended up seeing a pretty significant performance jump going from the SOC to the performance preset on the 5600U. This time around, we're currently running the test baseline on the 5500U at stock. And you can see that the package power right now is going all the way up to 25 watt. And that is essentially the boost TDP of the chip. After letting this run for about a minute or two, it pretty much ends up dropping the speeds down to the stock setting, but you can see what the boost times are here, which is why it's one of the reasons that I run multiple tests of every game, because I want to get past the boost period, because that's just going to to give you an unrealistic viewpoint of what the performance is actually like because unless you're playing any game within a two to three minute window you're really not going to actually get this level of performance for sustained workloads you can see here as we jump ahead that we are down now to about 15 watts, which is what things level off onto for the stock setting. And this is part of the reason why Cinebench also does the test runs now for a minimum of 10 minutes, because some of these boost durations can actually go on for a decent amount of time, relatively speaking, in the sense that they could be three to five minutes long. But again, unless you're only playing games within that time period, it's really not going to represent anything in the long term experience of actually playing a game. In the end, at the stock setting, we end up with a final score of 5,708, which is a decent enough score, but let's see what we actually end up getting if we run this with the performance preset. Now, one thing to note, of course, is that we are guzzling down a lot of power here, though we aren't reaching the full 30 watts, obviously, because we are reaching the temperature limits here. This is a lot of power to be putting through this chassis, and it's not realistically how I would use this system. I would really just stick to the balance preset because the 25 watts really seems to be about the limit that this system can really handle. But really, at the end here, we pretty much end up with a solid bump in performance, though nothing incredible, with a final score of 6,000. 726. So while there is a performance bump here, it's not the same as the 2000 point increase that we saw on the 5600U. Now let's see if the gains are there in terms of gameplay. So we're going to be testing out the same games that we did last time, which are Far Cry 6 and CSGO. So starting off comparing the stock settings with the battery saver preset, we can pretty much see here that it is not anywhere near as impressive as the numbers that we were getting with the 5600U. The 5600U at the 8 watt tdp was actually still giving some pretty solid numbers in this game while here the 8 watt tdp on the 5500u is really just showing that this is not capable of doing anywhere near the level of performance at that wattage compared to the 5600u this is pretty much just what you would kind of expect in this kind of situation more than anything that is even remotely impressive i mean the game is at least somewhat playable at the stock tdp but really at the 8 watts it is just going to be completely unplayable while on the 5600 you you could realistically make an argument that it was at least somewhat playable at the 8 watt tdp so overall nothing impressive here at all but moving on to the presets that people would actually realistically use at the 25 watt tdp we do see a boost in the averages and the one percent lows though it's nothing that's going to be remarkable it is at least a welcome bump especially in the one percent lows that are now staying above 30 instead of just really dancing around that target and the average is also going Going a lot closer to 50 now being in the mid 40s is going to make a welcome improvement overall to the experience and realistically speaking here if you look at the temperatures we're also not even seeing that big of an increase in temperatures versus the performance increase that we're seeing here so overall i would consider this one to be an actual win here and the balance preset really is just demonstrating the fact that it is pretty much the best preset to just end up 
using because it increases the temperatures but at least you're also getting a performance increase instead of just ridiculous temperatures with almost no gain whatsoever that being said though there are some improvements to be made at the performance preset because now we're looking at what is essentially a 50 fps average with one percent lows that are really starting to get closer to 40 than anything else but overall the experience is going to be better than what you're getting at the stock setting it's not that much better over what you were already getting at the 25 watt tdp and we're really starting to push things here in terms of temperature and even the system itself is not really keeping a lock 30 watts though it wasn't really doing that at the 25 watts either but really where the gains are the most welcome here are just in those one percent lows even the averages aren't seeing as big of an uplift as much as those one percent lows are because those are going to be what affects the overall gameplay experience more than anything else though the bump in the averages is also welcome for sure overall i think far cry 6 is a win on this but let's take a look at what it does in a game that is far more cpu bound so here we have csgo running on the same bot match that we almost always end up testing which is just on train again the reason we do a bot match is because of the fact that csgo really blocks all third party overlays unless you just don't do any multiplayer stuff so this is really the only way to actually get numbers from msi afterburner here and the level level of performance is pretty decent in terms of averages but if you look at the one percent lows things are pretty rough there so so we have this constant stutter experience throughout the whole gameplay here that really kind of sours the experience overall though it's still playable you are going to notice this kind of hitchiness and almost heaviness while trying to play the game that is not that great of an experience though part of it might also just be the fact that the ips display in this specific laptop is not great for gaming you can tell that the response time is not great but the experience can't get much worse here if we drop things down to just the 8 watt tdp you can see that the level of performance that we're getting here is really rough even for a game like CSGO where the 1% lows are pretty brutal but the fact that the averages are now dipping below 60 really overall makes the experience extremely rough here and it actually makes it pretty difficult to play the game because having these inconsistent fluctuations in FPS really make precise aiming difficult. So a similar situation to Far Cry 6 where the experience of actually playing this is pretty rough overall and the 8 watt TD really is just not going to be that viable of an option on this specific chip in fact it's not until we pretty much go with the balance reset that we actually start to see a uplift in the one percent lows though it's nothing remarkable it is at least making the experience a little bit smoother but it's again not hitting anything remarkable and our averages aren't exactly seeing a huge huge uplift but at, it at least is not a detriment to the gaming experience and the temperatures aren't even going up that much so overall it is just a welcome improvement overall though it's not making as substantial substantial of a difference as it did in Far Cry 6 where I felt like it actually greatly improved the experience overall here it's not really doing that that much but a bump in the 1% lows is again always welcome now at the performance preset we pretty much again see a bump in terms of the 1% lows and the averages see a nice little bump there but it is nothing substantial really the 1% lows seeing an uplift is the biggest gain here but it's not going to be anything substantial not like we're getting an increase of 20 or 30 fps there really we're just talking about a handful of frames it is going to be consistently a smoother experience but it's not going to be life-changing or anything like that now the temperatures aren't getting into anything that i would consider to be dangerous i mean we're teetering on the edge of 80 so depending on your region in terms of ambient temperatures if you have air conditioning and a lot of other factors like that this might just be too much it's definitely at the edge here and this is already a game that's not exactly stressing the cpu a lot it's mostly just taxing the gpu not even at 100 percent and you can see that the cpu is not being fully utilized we're talking about maybe using one or two cores here so in that situation you pretty much end up in a interesting spot where there are gains to be had here but they're not substantial and in this game it doesn't end up using a lot of resources but other games definitely will end up using more resources and if we tax that cpu more while also hitting the gpu like this it might end up putting us into a spot where things might just be getting into some pretty dangerous temperature so overall pretty much the apu tuning utility just ends up actually making the overall experience a lot easier to raise the tdp and it really simplifies a lot of things though the gains seem to just not be as great on the 5500u in terms of what you're going to gain in terms of cpu performance and 
even GPU performance, though some of the bumps that we saw in Far Cry 6 really do take it from being a not really playable experience to something that can actually be pretty enjoyable. So there are potentially gains to be made there, though you are risking a lot more heat being generated on your system. And it really just depends on you personally on whether or not that's going to be worth it. Personally, I'd stick with the balance preset if you can. If it's still too much for you, then stock is going to be perfectly fine a lot of the times, though just understand that there will be certain games that just will not be playable on your system like that <laughs> but anyways we made it to a thousand subscribers and i'm kind of just blown away by that guy so i really really appreciate that i just i don't even know if i should do like a thousand sub special or if i should just keep doing what i'm already doing i don't know so just let, let me know down below what you think and i'll see you guys next time